in the very home. Hey, Representative Garcia. Who am I speaking? Hey, it's Evan from the Council of Governments. Hey, Evan, I can see you, but I don't have no video of this thing for some reason. Uh, that'll save us the trouble of looking at you. Uh, I love you too. <laughs> That's okay. We just need your ears, your mind, and your uh, heart. And your money. <laughs> That's it too, your wallet. I don't know why I can't have no video of this thing for some reason. I see you full blown now. Uh, that's that's tough for your eyes. Hey, there you are. Where am I at? <laughs> well, I got to get you off there, man. You're making me sick. I just too scary. <laughs> I could never. I never thought you'd be that ugly, that big, so quick. <laughs> anyway, I'm here. Good to have you with us. It looks like we've got uh, Senator Munoz as well and. Senator Sanchez, uh, both jumping on. So we should be able to get started here in a couple couple minutes. Senator Watkornin, oh, there he is, my friend. I be here, I be here. Hey, Evan, I think you're muted if you're talking. Sorry, just uh, um, this. I'm getting used to the videos and, and participating on Zoom, but I haven't run one myself, so I just didn't didn't know what you could see on the screen. So hopefully, you're seeing the agenda. Um, that's gonna take us through the next uh, two hours um, here, and I'll, I'll I have the PowerPoint for everybody that submitted their slides, so. I'll be kind of the, the host. Um, and if everybody's ready, um, we can we can we can get rocking. I'm good, Evan. Whenever you're ready to start. Good to see you guys. Perfect. Welcome, Senator Munoz, Senator Sanchez, Representative Alcone, Representative Garcia. Um, let me uh, let me just throw the the PowerPoint up so I don't get lost. Uh, okay, welcome everybody to the 2021 uh, Cebola Legislative Forum. Um, just wanted to go over a couple things. Uh, appreciate everybody. Um, that's here today uh, with us. Um, just wanted to go over a, a couple of, of items. Again, I, I'm Evan Williams. I'm the executive director here at the Northwest New Mexico Council of Governments. Um, I've worked for the COG for the past 18 years. 
um, just became the executive director in April 2019. Uh, most folks will recognize and remember our past executive directors, uh, most recently Jeff Kiley, and before that was Patty Lundstrom. Um, just as a way of introduction and orientation, I wanted to take a short minute uh, to explain what the Council of Governments uh, is and does. Um, we're one of seven planning and development districts that covers the state of New Mexico. Uh, our region uh, covers the counties of San Juan, McKinley, and Cibola. We serve as a state designated planning and development district and also as an economic develop development district through the US Economic Development Administration. So basically we have the responsibility to help communities in the region uh, create and implement plans develop and finance projects and provide technical assistance along the way. Um, the, COG, the COG is formed by its members made up of the cities and counties in our region. Uh, each member has a specific work program that we help them with to, to per, proceed with their individual goals and help them move towards the collective regional good. Um, one of the key services that the COG is able to provide is legislative and capital tech capital outlay technical assistance. Um, again, the COG has been physically staffing the session for over 15 years. Um, and this year, I'll be handing over the reins to Brandon Howe, our planner. Um, so he will be the one that you will be calling at midnight with any issues or, or needs. Um, and we'll introduce him as we go through the program. Um, we, we do have an orientation and several training videos that are on our YouTube page. So if you want more information on what we do and who we are, uh, feel free to go there. I'll drop that in the chat later in the session. Uh, just to acknowledge a couple people, uh, first and foremost, we appreciate the continued support and partnership from our members, uh, notably the Village of Milan, City of Grants and Cibola County. Um, this annual legislative briefing is made possible by their commitment to the COG and our team. Uh, second, we appreciate our legislators for taking time out of their busy schedules to join us today and make the, make the commitment to serve their constituents in the state of New Mexico, whether that's in person or virtually. Um, again, the COG has been hosting and facilitating this event for over 10 years. We believe it's helpful to, for both the entities of, all the entities of Cibola County um, and the legislators to get all of the issues and needs concentrated into one place and condensed into a two hour session. Uh, it's valuable for our entities to hear and recognize the needs of each other and where we can lend a hand or partner up. Uh, typically, we hear people huddle up after these sessions and say things like, hey, I didn't realize that that, that was an issue for you. Uh, we're having the same issues here at our organization, whether that's things like broadband, workforce recruitment, or housing, uh, any of these issues that we all as community members bear in common. Uh, third, I wanted to thank Wilson and Company for their ongoing technical support of many of the communities and their willingness every year to sponsor this event in a variety of forms. Uh, next, I wanted to thank Brandon Howe for stepping up to convene everybody, organize today's event. So if something goes wrong, you can blame it on him. Uh, again, he will be the one providing staffing support for capital outlay this session for our region and all of the entities and places in between, um, whether that's in Santa Fe or virtually. Uh, I also wanted to thank City of Grants and Chris Royball for setting all of this technology up for us today. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items before we launch. Um, hopefully we're able to tape this session or stream it so the public can view it later. Um, it also provide a chance for legislators to go back, kind of review this as part of their notes taking. Um, and I just remind all the entities, again, to be respectful of everyone's time. Just keep your presentations to five minutes. So do your best shark, shark tank impersonations. Um, again, most of the legislators know the community needs and projects already and have worked for a long time and, and through the interim committees know a lot about you. So again, there'll be room for questions and answers if we need to drill into anything, um, but please just cut to the ask um, and leave the details for another time. Um, again, the COG's committed to the legislative success for this year. So 
if legislators need an office or computer or IT help um, during the upcoming session, um, we've got a number of folks that are willing to provide that to you. The COG is as well, but I know Cibola Communities Economic Development Foundation has offered uh, whatever we need to do to help support you to be successful. We're all here willing to do that. Um, again, the COG is off, also trying to virtually set up capital outlay support. So if your constituents or governments need help getting their capital outlay submitted, tracked, uh, vetted, whatever, um, we've set up a whole booking system where people can meet with my staff, myself for an hour, two hours, whatever it takes to get their capital outlay submitted. Uh, hopefully we can get that all worked out before the session to make it as easy as possible. Um, with that, I uh, wanted to provide the opportunities for each legislator to introduce themselves, their district they represent, and any critical information that they want to share about the upcoming session. So at this point, I would ask that we start um, with the representative Alcon, uh, Alceo, if you want to lead us off. You think uh, you're ready for me? I, uh, I'm Representative Eliseo Lee Alcon, of course, and uh, I represent uh, parts of Cibola and McKinley County. Uh, my district uh, doesn't seem like it's that big, but in this district, I have uh, nine chapter houses. I have the city of Grants, the county of Cibola. I have the village of Milan. And then I have uh, the city of Gallup and uh, McKinley County and all the other entities that are in between. So it's kind of a fun district. Uh, probably the most diversified district in the world where uh, I have a 73% Native American district. And uh, even in that, I have a Mormon community in my district, which is really unusual for the state of New Mexico. So you just think about how diversified this district is. I, uh, I have always said that when you're in Santa Fe, my office is your office. However, this year, I don't even know if I'm gonna have an office. So, but if something happens that uh, we are going to be in Santa Fe and if any of you and I mean, any of you need a, spell, a place to hang a coat, to sit down behind a desk and do some work, whatever. Uh, my office is there on the third floor and you're welcome to use it. It's always been open and it'll continue to be open. Like I say this year, uh, my office might be here in my house. So anyway, thanks, Ark. Hey, Ben Jaime. I don't know why you okay. mess, mess up your name. It's, it's hard, it's hard. <laughs> it's another four letter word to forget. Uh, yeah. <laughs> next, next representative, why don't we uh, uh, shoot over to Representative Garcia. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Evan. Thanks for putting this on today. My name is Harry Garcia. I represent the House District 69, which consists, consists of San Juan, McKinley, Cibola, Bernalillo, Valencia, and Socorro County. I represent nine chapters. I have the Pueblo of Acoma, the Pueblo of Laguna, the Pueblo of Isleta, Tohajali, and Alamo. I think I have the, about the largest district in the state of New Mexico and the ruralest district in the state of New Mexico. And uh, like uh, Representative Alcon also, myself, my door is always open. You do not ever need an appointment to call, talk to me. You can call me or go to my office if we do have an office this year. Uh, I look forward to working with all of you today. And in the future, uh, I look to, uh, forward to working with uh, Representative Alcon, Senator uh, uh, Sanchez, and Senator Munoz. And if we work together, we can get things done. And I look forward to doing that. I have not met the new Senator yet. I look forward to doing that in the near future. And uh, once again, uh, you know, uh, it's not, it might not be as good as we think it is as far as capital outlay is concerned, and uh, you people out there, all of you, all the entities that are here need to keep in mind that I have one of the biggest districts in the state and uh, the money we're getting, which we don't even know how much it's gonna be. I have to divide it between uh, six counties. So you need to keep that in mind. So you can't, uh, people can't say, well, he spent more money on them what he did on us, that kind of stuff. So I look forward to helping everybody. Uh, Thank you, Evan. 
Thanks, Representative. Appreciate it. Uh, Senator Munoz. Um, thank you, Evan, and, and hope everybody's doing good. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to repeat anything anybody said, just, you know, any way we can help you. Uh, if we do have a session, the Senate's probably going to be a little different than the House. Uh, so we may be in and out and, and you need to make sure you got our phone numbers and our, and our emails and especially our phone numbers because our emails will probably fill up really quickly. So make sure that that you can get a hold of us. And my cell number is listed on the website or I'll give it to you 505 seven two one zero zero one nine if you do text me call me up with a call because i do get 100 or 200 texts a day and it's just hard to manage um number one thing i want to hear from you guys is have you spent your current capital what's your outstanding balances that you have in cap and capital and what projects uh do you need more money to complete uh before we start any new projects there's a, a billion 500, 1.5 billion sitting out there in unspent capital projects. Um, so if you have part of that unspent money uh, and you need money to finish up your projects, that's going to be a priority. If you're asking for a new project that you can't complete uh, unless it's infrastructure, water, sewer, um, I don't know how, how willing I'll be to do that. Uh, I hope everybody's safe. Um, but let us know and make sure that you're able to contact us. I appreciate guys all support. And, and those house guys, they always say they have the biggest districts. Well, here comes the two senators and our districts are almost <laughs> three times the size of theirs and, and, and four times the population. So uh, I guess we're the big boys on the block. Josh, you better follow that up pretty good. Thanks, Senator. Uh, Senator Sanchez, welcome. Thank you guys for having me today. <laughs> I'll have to follow up there with George. Yeah, we do have some pretty big districts. Uh, I represent uh, District 30. I'm Senator-elect Joshua A. Sanchez. I have Valencia County, Socorro, Cibola, and McKinley. And I'm willing to work with all you guys. And like you said, we need to get our phone numbers out there and our emails. I could either put it up in the chat or I could give it to you. My cell number is 505. Six two zero twenty two thirty seven, and an email is J A S the number four N M at gmail dot com. And again, thank you for putting this on today, and thank you for inviting me. Thanks for thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, just just with the recommendation or the request of Senator Munoz, uh, if entities could uh, uh, be ready with 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 uh, providing some insight on their their the capital outlay that's already been appropriated, the status of those projects, and how your requests this year fit into those those getting those projects done. Um, again, I think the the theme is finish what we start. Don't start something till we get get everything done that we have money for. Um, so if Brandon can help me with CPMS, just make sure um, we're able to take a look at CPMS if we need to, the capital outlay monitoring system, um, just in case there's any specific questions as we move forward. But I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So um, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get started here with our, our local entities. And hopefully you can see uh, see what I've got on my screen and it works for everybody. Again, appreciate all the entities for kind of sticking with us on following the format, getting things submitted. So again, this is our, our 2021 uh, legislative forum. Um, this is kind of the, the flow of things that we're gonna do today. So right now we're focused on the, the local presentations. Um, Already went through the, the welcome address. Um, you heard from our area legislators. So again, I just ask people if you're if you're not uh, if you're not speaking and you're not a legislator, just put yourself on mute. 
Um, again, we're going to kind of do five minute presentations and then leave about five minutes for legislative questions. So first up, we have Cibola County. I think we're joined today by Judy Horacek. Kate or Judy? Yeah, Judy, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, because I was having problems with my mic. So tech was standing by. <laughs> uh, so Cibola County has three legislative priorities this year. Um, so last year we did request funding um, to plan, design, renovate, relocate the Cibola County Public Safety Building. Um, we did receive funding last year for 650,000. We went to RFP for architect. Uh, that RFP closes on January 4th. So once we get an architect on board, we should be drawing down that funds quite quickly. Um, but this, and I don't know exactly how much this project is gonna cost at this time. Um, we do have, the architect will be doing um, schematic drawings and uh, master plan so that we can um, use this facility that we have just um, we just got it in September. It's the old armory building. I don't know if that's familiar to any of the um, any of the residents and people in this area. But this uh, we yeah. were don the armory building was donated to the county, and this is the building now that we'll be using um, for the public safety building. Should I go to legislative priority? Okay, legislative priority number two. This is one we asked for last year as well. Um, we did not get funding for it uh, last year, and it is a critical road. It's one that I've talked about many times. Um, it's so for that one, it's the bridge. It provides the only access to the Marquez community and several large ranches, as well as access to the wind farm array, solar power field operated by PNM atop the nearby Mesa. So it's a pretty critical road um, that is in it's in very poor condition and that bridge could collapse at any moment. So we're requesting for this request um, 500,000. Uh, priority number three, I'm gonna turn that over to Thomas Whelan. I saw him here today. Um, he'll speak on this one. Thank, thank you, Judy. Uh, elected officials, uh, Mr. Williams, I wanna thank the county manager for including the, the hospital in this and, and Judy's work on, on this. The county and the hospital just recently uh, signed a lease agreement that the, the hospital and the land around it belongs to the county uh, and then the corporation runs it. And we also signed an operating agreement. But the, the parking lot um, and hospital we built 20 years ago. And we last year we did a little bit of uh, tar and and surfacing of some of the really rough spots but it is in in bad need of of being replaced um, and then I, at this point in time i'll also throw in that in that operating agreement we agreed with the county commissioners to remodel the emergency room and so in future years you'll hear from us on that project Thank you, uh, Cibola County and uh, Cibola General Hospital for those three. Any any questions for Cibola County on their legislative priorities uh, from our legislators? Hi, uh, Evan. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I have a question uh, for Judy. Uh, Judy, on that road from Cebolleta. Yes. Uh, how many people from Sandoval travel that road? Because I know that in Marcus right now, there's probably two or three families that are living there. Yeah, uh, there are several people from Sandoval um, that do travel that road. I don't know exact number. Uh, I'd say about 20 to 30 at least. Um, but there is no other way for them to travel. The, uh, the other, um, any other route is not a, a clear road. Uh, so they would have no other way to get through. The reason I brought that up, Judy, is... Uh, have you reached out to Sandoval County to see if they're uh, willing to uh, invest any money on that? Since, you know, 90% of the usage comes from Sandoval County. Because, you know, I talked to uh, 
some people from Marcus, and there's only like two, three families that live in Marcus, period. Yeah. You know, there is but a there's also industry there, but no, you're, uh, we have, I haven't reached out myself personally. I know in the past, um, um, uh, Sybil County has reached out to um, Sandoval, but it has not, we have not reached out recently. And, and, and I might be mistaken, Judy, but I thought we had appropriated money, but I think it got- uh, uh, that's, true. that's true. You're absolutely correct. We, you, you did, and we are very grateful for that. But yes, it, it did get pulled out. Uh, and Judy, what, uh, what we really need to work on, the road needs to get fixed, but uh, it needs to be a fair uh, fair deal for everybody. Okay. So, you know, I don't know if Sandoval County is willing to do anything, but it's worth a shot in the dark because, you know, they use it more than anybody else. And well, either that or maybe the, the people that have the wind farm out there. You know, I, I don't know. It's just a thought, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Any other questions for Saboa County? <laughs> if not, again, appreciate Saboa County for leading us off. Never, never an easy task, but you set a good precedent. Uh, quick to the point, uh, and obviously uh, a lot of these projects are continuation. Um, moving right along, uh, we're going to go to the City of Grants. We've got City Manager uh, Laura Harmio and uh, Mario from Wilson and Company. Take it away. Good afternoon. This is Laura Jaramillo, the City Manager. Um, thank you for giving us this opportunity. It's always a pleasure to uh, present the needs of our community to our representatives and legislators. We can go to the next slide. Um, we have actually four projects that are possibilities for funding. Our first priority is the domestic violence shelter improvements, and that is known as Roberta's Place. Um, Roberta's Place facility is owned by the city. It's operated by the nonprofit domestic violence organization. And that facility has had minimal upgrades over the years. And we've discovered this last year that we have a major sewer collapse. So um, we would like funding to address that. It is on our ICIP and it will um, help us provide service for victims of domestic violence. Um, we average eight to 12 residents daily. The project cost we're looking at is 150,000 from um, legislature and the city can match 25,000 of that for a total project cost of 175,000. After the work on the collapse sewer, there will be work on new flooring and upgrades to the cooling and heating system. Next slide, please. Our second priority is golf course pump station upgrade. So uh, we have 30 year old pump station operating system that needs to be replaced, including the computer program. Uh, this is also on the ICIP. Um, this helps uh, with our irrigation system for 212 acres of golf course grass. Uh, and we'd like to point out this is part of our wastewater treatment system. And um, the disbursement of the affluent water onto a crop is part of that whole system. And so it's very important. The total project cost would be 200,000. And so far the city's uh, contributed 25,000 match and um, we're looking at 175,000 from legislature. Next slide. Priority number three is Washington Avenue drainage improvement. Uh, many of you from this area may have noticed the drainage improvements taking place on Jefferson, which is the adjacent street. And it's kind of the center of our community where we've had a lot of flooding over the years impacting schools, the community center, as well as many residential homes. So we've been able to address Jefferson Street. We are asking for CDBG funding for parts of Washington. And this is on our ICIP. Um, it will alleviate flooding for many homes and school, family center, and two churches. Um, 
the total project cost is 446,243. Uh, funded to date is 196,243 from NMDOT. And so we're requesting 250,000 for this project. Next slide. Our last priority number four is Sacalera's Boulevard reconstruction. Uh, over the last few years, we've had many concerns about this road. Um, it is a highly uh, high traffic road, uh, takes uh, citizens and workers to the prison, and it's one of the thoroughfares on our, our area. Um, the ICIP, it is included on that. The project impact, the 25 year old three mile uh, arterial road is where future development is being planned and is currently in very poor shape. The total project cost would be 200,000. So far, the city uh, funded to date is 25,000. And so we're requesting 175,000. Um, as far as our prior projects, we're right on track. Um, one of the major projects we're, we've been working on over the last few years is First Street. And that's uh, slated to begin constructions uh, here very soon. Um, it's being bid out and uh, construction will start when the weather is, is better and appropriate. And then we're working on the rodeo grounds. Um, that was just in the most recent bond sale, but we already have an engineering firm on board that's working with us and the local rodeo association. So there's been a lot of pre-planning and we're ready to go on that project. Um, are there any questions? Um, um, we have Mario on the line and Donald, our project person that can help answer questions as well. Questions for the city of Grants? Uh, I have a question, Evan. Uh, no, I was looking at your first three project, uh, uh, Matt and Laura. And uh, we funded that, we gave them $175,000 in 2018. And I see it hasn't moved any, that uh, 175,000 is still sitting there. Is there any reason behind that? I think it'll be moving in the next um, few weeks with the start of the project. Donald might be able to address that a little bit better. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Garcia, legislators all involved. Uh, the uh, actually what we've been doing is because as costs go up, we've been saving all the agreements up to construction because we didn't know where costs were going to be. And every time we went to bid, which was twice, twice already, the costs were higher. So we've saved every agreement for construction. That's the first ag agreement we're going to utilize. Uh, and, and it has an extension. We, we've already asked an, an extension for it and DOT approved it. But that's the first agreement we're going to utilize now that we start construction probably in February, March. Uh, thank you, Donald, because, you know, uh, we uh, funded another 1.6 million in 2019. And, you know, what I'm afraid of, if it start, then start moving and, and something goes sour in, uh, in the state, we would wind up taking it away from you. And, you know, we really need to make sure that these monies uh, start getting moved. And I, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, an extension is fine. But come down at the end of the day, if, if we need that money back, the state will sweep it back. And, you know, I don't want that to happen, you know, because then we're going to have First Street in the, in the mess it's in right now. But I was just looking at my capital loudly, it just sent me out, and that money hasn't moved at all. And that's just a concern. And uh, this manager on the Sacalaria Road, what, is that the road that goes right in front of the prison? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, now you're asking for $200,000. What are you going to do with $200,000? Because you're not going to fix that road with $200,000. Because that's so far yeah. up from uh, what, when they built that school out there and, and uh, I guess uh, Mesa. Or... The, yes, sir. This is actually design money so that we'll be ready to go. And um, it'll be a shovel ready project for additional funding. So this is design only. Uh, 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 Madam, uh, Madam Secretary, I mean, uh, the city manager, do you have any idea what it would cost to fix this road? Because I mean, it's in bad shape. That yeah, they, the last so estimates bad. I heard, uh, I don't know if Donald's trying to answer, but the last estimates we've heard, it, 
it's at least a million per mile. So, and I'm sure it's more than that by now. Yeah. Um, Mr. Garcia, Don, Don Jaramillo again. Um, and actually the, the 200,000 is primarily probably not even for design, but a PER needs to be done first for planning. So that's what the $200,000 is for. Uh, to do design on Sacralaris, it's going to probably cost anywhere from a half a million to a million because the most recent estimate is about 10 million then that's from that's from lobo canyon road to route 66 and that's totally a reconstruction subgrade up because from what i understand now is a subgrade of that road is not is not uh ac adequate oh uh, the donald is that road is it a forest road or a state road or is that just a city road it, it's a city road. However, it does, it, it qualifies for different uh, additional funding uh, sources because it links the highways, State Highway 66 and Lobo Canyon Road. So whenever we go for funding, like obviously now we're, we're going for design, but whenever we go for funding, there, there are some programs that include those types of roads that link highways and that's probably one of the sources we're going to look at and we'll probably look at several sources on this road but we're, we're understand right now we're just in the beginning stages uh, and for the, uh, the people that are listening and don't know what uh global canyon road is that's actually state road uh 549 i'm at I think, am i correct i you know i don't know mr garcia i don't know the state road but uh, i know it's a state road I'm almost sure it's State Road 549, that one that goes up to the Canyon. Just to clarify that way, people know uh, what road we're talking about and what, what the link up is on. Yeah. I, uh, I have one question on First and Second Street, uh, Laura. And uh, basically, I, I just want to make sure that in 2018, there's 175,000. And then in two, 2019, you have $1.6 million. You are aware of those dollars, right? Yes, we are. Okay, that was uh, my one question. And then, of course, the, uh, the domestic uh, violence shelter, that is the old uh, OCAW building? I believe so. It's the one out not too far from Subway. Okay, yeah, that's, that used to be my meeting hall when I was a union member. Long, long time ago. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, Evan, can I uh, ask one more question, please? Sure, Representative. Uh, on uh, Laura, on, on uh, Roberta's, I am hearing that they're losing funding. Are you aware of that? No, I've not heard that, but I, I suspect most, um, most states agencies are going to probably look at somebody, a, Laura, a, excuse me laura excuse me laura somebody needs to get muted because i'm hearing somebody else talking can you hear me now yeah go, go ahead Laura. okay so um i have not heard that they're losing funding but i think probably we're anticipating that all state funded agencies may see uh, a cut in funding due to the economy but I, I don't believe it's a total cut in funding. It's probably they may receive a little bit less than they've normally gotten. I talked to the, the director, I guess, of uh, Laura, I mean, uh, Roberta's place, and she was talking about a 77% cut on their funding for some reason. I wasn't quite sure what she was talking about, but she did mention it. And uh, uh, she said if we could help her with capital outlay, but you know, you might want to look into that. It's, uh, it's federal funding that is being taken away, and that's what uh, she's worried about. It hasn't been an, it hasn't been budgeted or unbudgeted yet, but it is in the in the works on the federal side for uh, domestic violence shelters to be losing money. So it's federal money that uh, that Jessica is worried about, which uh, we have no control over. Uh, thank you, Representative Alcon. And you know, looking, but my concern is that you know we need to look into it to see how we can keep it afloat. I guess because uh, if she loses that kind of funding, it might be uh, not a good deal. And then you're and you're looking at, uh, I think you said uh, one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars to do the sewer thing on that thing, and we need to make sure she stays in there. Uh, thank you, Madam. 
I'm mean, not Laura. Thank you. Thanks, representatives. Uh, any other questions for the city of Grants? Otherwise, we're going to move right on to Village of Milan. I believe Denise Baca is going to give the presentation for the village. And of course, Mario uh, Juarez Infante is also on deck with. Uh, Evan, good afternoon. Uh, uh, Denise had asked me, and the manager actually, uh, she couldn't be here today. Uh, she had a family emergency. But uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and present. And Denise uh, definitely is on, on the call and will correct me if I misspeak here. Uh, good, good afternoon, everybody. Next slide. <clears throat> the first priority, as you see it listed here, is uh, for the village is lift station improvements at 150,000. We do want to let the legislators know um, <clears throat> uh, the the village is currently in, uh, in the process of doing preliminary engineering report for these lift station improvements using planning dollars and are um, applying for USDA money next year. So the 150,000 is really to leverage the federal dollars. Uh, for, for the replacement of these lift stations. Um, next slide. Priority number two, the uh, Berry Hill subdivision. This, this area has been looked at for a number of years now. Uh, there was a PER done probably about 10, 15 years ago. Um, the intent is to get the conventional septic tanks offline, tie the residents into co uh, collection system to the village's collection system, and uh, also to, to upgrade the water system in the area. There's several undersized lines. Of course, we all know that it's important from an environmental perspective, if we can, to get the, the folks off of the conventional septic and onto uh, a wastewater treatment facility. Again, the 200,000, the intent is to leverage the this these monies towards uh, USDA um, and it, and it allows the village to position themselves in a, uh, strongly when, when, we, uh, when we submit the application next year in 2021 for, for uh, system improvements. Next slide. And then lastly is the water meter upgrades. The utilities department uh, continues to replace their old water meters. As we're improving their system, it's important that we get the, the uh, radio read water meters to reduce and save time and get more accuracy. And the, uh, the village is asking for 800,000 uh, for that. <clears throat> Again, want to thank the legislators and, and Evan for your team's work to bring everybody together. Um, are there any questions? Uh, Evan, I got some questions. Hello. Go ahead, Senator Munoz. Um, hey, uh, uh, let me call you. I'm, I'm on a Zoom call. Uh, Evan. Let me call you so, back. Uh, have you guys looked for any match money with the environment department? So um, we, we haven't. Right now, what for we're now. seeing, Senator Munoz, is that the, um, with USDA, we've been relatively very successful because you can get up to $5 million. Not that we're asking for $5 million. We don't know what the amount is. Um, <clears throat> and, and those decisions are made at the state level. You know, we've, we've, uh, we're to, to apply with uh, New Mexico Environment Department, Typically, uh, clean water, or in this case, drinking water, which is federal money, uh, the, the, the thresholds are much smaller. And really what the village is looking at is more of a system-wide improvements. So, so we think it's going to be much more reasonable to, to chase the bigger pot of money with the federal dollars. But we can certainly look at NMED. Senator Munoz. You had to prioritize a project. Uh, so number one, you would want fully first before you did the meters. And then I'm sorry, they switched slides on me. So the lift station is number one. And then the meters is number two, correct? The meters is number three. Uh, oh, Berry Hill is number, number two. Yes, sir. Okay. My truck keeps picking up my phone. So sorry about that. And then no, no, no uh, worries. what outstanding projects do you have? I didn't hear that. Um, well, uh, the, the village has actually done done very well. Um, they had the House Bill 694 in 2019, the local government transportation fund. We just closed out their project this year. The village also is uh, wrapping up the um, Kearns Park and working with staff to get the seed ordered 
for April April seating to get Kearns Park going. I don't know if you've had a chance to go out there, but Representative uh, uh, Eliseo Alcon was very instrumental there. So, so the village has been very, uh, getting their projects uh, done timely. There is one project under construction now that's CDBG funding. Uh, we are entering a, a winter winter season. And so we're anticipating we're gonna have a winter suspension, uh, but, but that's not at risk. We've been working with local government division on that CDBG project. So overall, they're getting them, they're getting them completed as we speak. Okay, I think that's it for me. I, I have a question on, on the Berry Hill project. Is this going to be connecting uh, some of the people that are not uh, uh, village uh, residents to the to to the sewer system that are in the county area? <coughs> not not at this point in time, uh, Representative Alcon. We we hadn't looked at that, um, and in fact, I I hadn't even had that discussion with the village. Uh, public works or the manager if that uh, you bring up a good question i i haven't had that discussion i can certainly bring it up at the moment we're looking at about 32 to 33 connections and they're all within village limits well and but uh, we are uh, i'm going to show you right off of berry hill and uh, that that immediate area we have about 30 homes i would say or more that are not uh, in the village but uh, they're having to use septic systems and uh and it would be uh, environmentally uh, great if we could just uh, find a way to connect them to the system. And, but, uh, okay, we'll, we'll work on that. <laughs> yes, sir, we'll raise it to, to the level there with uh, Ms. Denise Buck is on the, on the call now and to the manager and, and uh, make sure that, that they're aware and we get their direction. Okay, the other, uh, of course, uh, you have a lot of projects that are there in the village that are, that are pending, uh, other than Kearns. Uh, what, uh, uh, are they, are we going to use this money? Because I'm really scared that if we don't start using this money, and it's not millions and millions of dollars, we're going to lose it. And, uh, I mean, if you take, uh, for example, one of the things that I was looking at here is a uh, the Mirabal Park, that money's been sitting there since 2018, $208,000. And uh, I see that there's work being done there, but that's work's being, done, being worked on since I don't remember when, and it's just now starting, I guess. Uh, Representative Alcon, <clears throat> I will have to look into the expenditure on, on the Mirabal Park portion. Um, that, pro that project has been under construction for well over six weeks, seven weeks and has made a lot of progress. We are gonna go into suspension and finish up the project next year. It could be on our end that we're just not up to date on the CPMS. And the, uh, as, as Mr. Williams pointed out earlier, we've gotta be updating our capital management um, system for the state. And so I will, I will work with, with the village to make sure that we're up to date, sir, but um, I can assure you the monies are being expended. And so that, 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 doesn't, that balance doesn't sound accurate. I'll, I'll look into it. Okay, I'll uh, sidebar, I'll sidebar, coming from the courts, okay, I'll sidebar with you on the rest of the projects at a later time. You do have my phone number, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I, I'll just, uh, let, we'll just go on to other projects. Thank yep. you. Appreciate that, Representative. We'll, we'll definitely get you an update on all past Capital Alley projects on all three of these entities, just, just the good, the bad, and hopefully the better, um, and uh, get, get, make sure everybody give you the confidence you need um, to make other investments in these communities and make sure we're taking care of business on what we already got. Um, appreciate that on the village. Uh, moving right along, we're going to kick it over to Economic Development, uh, Cibola Communities, Economic Development Foundation, Executive Director Eileen Yarborough. Good afternoon, uh, Representatives Alcon and Garcia, Senators Munoz and Sanchez and everyone on the call. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, first slide, please. Um, uh, my first priority, our first priority for economic development is the development of the Milan Industrial Park. Uh, we'd like to move forward with uh, phase one, which is to plan, design, and construct infrastructure improvements at the Milan Industrial Park and any other business sites in Cibola County. We would like to request Milan to be the fiscal agent, if able. And um, yes, it is included on the IC 
CIP. And uh, the impact is for a hundred mile radius and to create up to a hundred economic based jobs. The total cost of the project is $78 million. We went before funded New Mexico a week and a half ago to pitch the project, put it out there and let people know that we are in the market for funding. Uh, to date, we've had, I know the uh, appropriations by representative uh, Garcia and Alcon, but I know that there's been prior work such as the flood plain, the FEMA designation, the diversion ditch, all of those things have gone to contribute towards getting this uh, industrial park shovel ready. Uh, the request for this particular legislative priority is 11 million two seventy nine seven fifty six. Number two. Moving on to uh, Cibola uh, Industrial Park. Our priority is to plan, design, and construct infrastructure improvements uh, at the Cibola Industrial Park and other business sites in Cibola County. We would request the City of Grants to be the fiscal agent. It is not included on the ICIP and uh, the impact would be to make the park sites shovel ready. While they do have, while it's platted, has roads, electricity, uh, water and such, um, it does need um, updated uh, internet and broadband service and the sites that uh, where actual construction would happen have lava that needs to be mitigated in some way, shape or form. So we would like to uh, look at, I guess, a feasibility or something to figure out how we're gonna mitigate that. And we estimate the project to be up to $2 million. It could be more. And we do not have anything funded to date other than the improvements that have already been put into the park. Number three. And finally, we uh, CCEDF would like to continue to advocate and find uh, funding sources for broadband infrastructure. Uh, we urge and hope to um, advocate for to continue the build out and deployment of fiber to the door. Um, it is not included in anyone's ICIP. However, I would ask you to reconsider that knowing uh, that um, the way things are now, remote work and uh, fiber connectivity would be very critical moving forward. Uh, this would serve up to 100,000 residents of Cibola and the Continental Divide uh, service territory. Um, and it would allow for economic based remote work job creation with the deployment of fiber to the door in Cibola County. The total project cost is millions and millions of dollars. Uh, CDEC and Sacred Wind have both spent millions of dollars uh, putting in the first and middle mile. And so now we are working to get the last mile funded. And there is not a request, but uh, we would be happy to help CDEC and or any wireless companies turn over stones to help identify funding for the deployment. Thank you. I would be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Eileen. Any questions from the legislators for Cibola Communities Economic Development? Either you're all on mute or there's no questions. So appreciate that. Um, Thank you, Evan. Thank thanks, you. Eileen. Um, moving on to the next presentation, we invited a presentation from Raymond Navajo. Um, if there's a representative here from Raymond Navajo, um, go ahead and unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Uh, Gilbert or Debbie? Well, I'll tell you what, if, uh, if uh, anybody from Raymond Navajo gets on, we will uh, bring this presentation back around, just overviewing it. Uh, Can you hear me? I'm trying, oh. I'm having connection issues. I'm sorry. Uh, again, can the you guys hear me? Yes, we can. A okay, good... hello. I'm so sorry. I'm having connection issues here. You're a good um, representative for broadband in rural areas. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. This is Debbie Islam. I'm the Senior Community Development Specialist with the Raymond Navajo Chapter. 
and we have four priority projects that we are going to be presenting to you. Um, you can start on the first slide. It's our legislative priority number one. It's the Rima chapter house renovation. And this project is to plan, design, construct, renovate, equip, and furnish the exi existing Rima Navajo chapter house in Mountain View, New Mexico, in the Rima Navajo chapter of the Navajo Nation in Cibola County. And this chapter house serves about 2,000 residents. To date, the total project cost is $2,788,125. Um, what's funded to date is $1,421,423. And we are requesting uh, $683,351 for the 2021 capital outlay. Um, and the next one is priority number three, um, which is the Rema chapter new community cemetery plan. And that is to plan, uh, that's to include land acquisition. Debbie, you went, you went on mute. Um, design go. and construct a community and our veterans cemetery in Rema Navajo chapter of the Navajo Nation in Cibola County. This will also serve about 2,000 residents. Uh, the total project cost is about 330,000. To date, funded is 5,000. And we're requesting from capital outlay 325,000. Um, the third project is legislative priority number four, which is the REMA chapter road grader purchase. Uh, which is to purchase and equip a new road grader for the Rima Navajo chapter of the Navajo Nation in Cibola County. Now, this will also serve about 2,000 residents. And of course, you know, it's a rural area and um, they have purchased used equipment, but it does not last long and they constantly break down. So we're trying to obtain and get them a new road grader to use. Uh, the total project cost for this is 395170 um, To date, zero is funded, and we're requesting uh, 395170 And the fourth project is legislative priority number five, which is the Rema chapter new solar farm plan. This is a new plan, so it's to plan, design, construct, Furnish and equip a new community scale solar farm for the Rayma Navajo chapter of the Navajo Nation in Cibola County. Again, this will serve about 2,000 residents. Uh, the total project cost would be $4 million. <laughs> looks like your uh, internet might have dropped there, Debbie, um, on the last project, but I think we. We definitely heard you on your first three. We've got the first two presented uh, here in the slide deck. So um, are there any questions for Rayma or anything we need to um, communicate down, down to the Rayma Navajo chapter or school board from our legislators? Are you guys able to hear me? I just realized that my screen was frozen. We, we can hear you now. We can also hear that dog in the background. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, the door's closed, but I guess you can still hear him. <laughs> I would love to answer any questions you may have. Awesome. Any, any, any questions from our legislators for Debbie? Just a comment. Uh, last year, uh, we had uh, $348,000 for that uh, grader and it got vetoed. So we're going to have right. to start again this year. That's correct. We're going to keep going. <laughs> okay. That's all I can say. Thanks. Okay. No problem. Thank you so much. Thanks for that presentation. Um, if there's no more no, questions, uh -huh. if there's no more questions, we're going to move on to uh, San Mateo uh, Secchio Association. I believe I have uh, Rick Urenda, president. Um, here today. Rick? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, uh, everyone, for uh, putting this together and uh, listening to our voices, uh, our concerns. Uh, one, our presentation, uh, 
and a tail and on. Uh, slide number one. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, so our our project is Sam Tail Pipe and Irrigation Ditch. As you can see by the by some of the pictures there, uh, we're in dire need of uh, infrastructure. And so our <clears throat> legislative priority number one would be to design install 12 inch PVC pipe, including V-shaped concrete ditches and gate valves at each member irrigation property. Now on this, uh, we've, we've also discussed whether to do one or the other. And of course, that's gonna be something that we're gonna be uh, asking our, our uh, design or, or our, should I say our engineering group to do a study to see which one is cheaper and uh, which is uh, would help us a lot more. And so anyway, pipe and ditches will be installed intermittent within the town limits of San Mateo. If we decide that uh, the cost is the same or whichever the case may be. Um, we currently serve uh, 28 residents, but we'd like to be able to serve more. Uh, and I know these these 28 residents are people with water rights and they uh, with uh, certified water rights. We'd like to help the rest of the community, and at, at this point we can't, and just because of the water flow, uh, it's not enough, and it's not uh, it's not proportioned to where it'll flow much uh, uh, efficient. Uh, the total cost of the project initially was six hundred nineteen thousand dollars, and this is uh, including the first phase. In our first phase, we've already been awarded uh, the two hundred thousand dollars. And uh, so, of course, we're we're requesting the the uh, the remaining to be four hundred nineteen thousand dollars. Our at this point, uh, we have um, already contacted or contracted with the uh, engineering group, uh, Wilson and Company, and have already. Uh, so we should be able to get this uh, the the design presented sometime this week. Uh, and approved by us, and then uh, we can move forward. Uh, we are hoping we're right on track with this, with a 200,000, with this uh, contract award. So we should be able to finalize this project by the end of, or mid-February or end of February, because just due to the COVID. And of course, uh, we have to find contractors and not an easy task these days. Uh, I've been trying to contact a few here and there, but uh, so uh, with that, I do for opening for questions. Thanks, Rick. Any questions for San Mateo? <laughs> Not sure if I lost everybody or or, hey, you're, 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 or I'm that good. <laughs> or, that, or Rick's that good? Yeah, Representative <laughs> Garcia. Uh, thank you, Evan. Uh, Rick, on that money that you got, you know, I know you guys were struggling to get it. And uh, for the committee where people are listening, uh, I think this money was just awarded to San Mateo here in the last, what, Rick, three or four weeks ago? Yeah, maybe uh, maximum three, about three weeks. We signed up. We finally uh, uh, heard from uh, <coughs> OSC and they uh, sent us the contract. So, yes. And then the reason I brought it up is so other people that are uh, thinking of uh, investing or helping me out in, on this project is they had a problem in Santa Fe and this money just sat there and sat there until we got on them and it uh, got taken care of. So I'm glad that they brought up. And then Rick, another issue is if you ever get money from anybody and, and you're having a, you feel that's getting stalled out, reach out. Because if you don't reach out, we don't know if you got it, if you didn't know, could you get it, okay? That's so, correct. And uh, my uh, capital outlet shows it was there, but if it's on the capital outlet sheet and you didn't get it, it doesn't do you no good anyway. But, you know, just reach out and then the, in the future, just reach out. You know, Thank you, Representative Garcia. I know that. If one of the senators and make sure it gets done, make sure it gets taken care of. Yes, sir. Thank you so much you for know, your help as well. And I know after you, after I did reach out to you, uh, made some phone calls, and that, that's all it took. And uh, 
So but thank see, you the, the, the problem, Rick, is, is just say, well, you wouldn't have reached out and you're going to sit there and come this next time around and you want more capital outlay, the first thing they're going to throw in your face is, well, you haven't even got this other one going. So how can you get more? It's just, a, just a, you know, keep on top of it. That way you don't lose it, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Representative. Any other questions? Well, I appreciate, appreciate San Mateo. Thanks, thanks for all the hard work, moving your appropriation forward and helping your community. Thank you. We'll see ya. Uh, see next up on the agenda, we have Blue Water, uh, Water and Sanitation District, uh, Mr. Paul Spencer. Thank you, Ian. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, setting up this meeting. Uh, Representative uh, Harry Garcia and Alcon and uh, Senator Munoz, thank you for your time. Um, we we are we lost our funding, as you may know, uh, to the updates on the uh, sewer plant uh, last year because of our AUEP report, and um, we're still in need of uh, a substantial amount of money. Um, and so this uh, four hundred thousand dollars that we're looking for in capital outlay to address this issue is just to make up the difference uh, in between the uh, we had to make an addition to that sewer plant, and that is we need a drying bed because. The services to uh, haul off the sludge is no longer uh, provided, uh, and uh, also the price of iron went up during that time. And um, we were short, I think, thirty thousand dollars is the reason why uh, we we uh, lost that funding. We we weren't in compliance with the uh, with the loan uh, on the intended use plan, and um, so we like to continue forward, but we're definitely going to need uh, a lot of your help, and we appreciate the help that you've uh, and the support you've given us so far. Um, and uh, so if you, uh, you have questions for that, let's go to the next slide. Um, Evan, if you would, thank you. The the next uh, project we like to work on is uh, to replace the water isolation valves that uh, weren't replaced during the first project that we had when we uh, put in the, uh, the new, new well and our new arsenic plant there. Um, and there's some fire hydrants around the, uh, the village that definitely need replaced as well. Uh, one being right next to the school. Um, and it's like some of these things that we, we worked on, um, the reason why we came out of compliance financially was because we are dealing with the, the aging infrastructure there. And um, I think it was $10,000 for the electric bill, uh, $8,000 for the community center. So we, we, we addressed those issues. We no longer have an office full-time there because we're trying to do cost savings so we can stay up to date. But maybe if we, uh, you know, get capital outlay and have this fund in there and we can work on that, that helping uh, keep up with the, uh, the system breakdowns, we won't have to tap into our running fund. Um, uh, so if we can get these things fixed, that definitely need to get fixed, especially because since the new school is going in, um, being that the fire hydrant's right next to the school, it's just a those kind of, kind of the key items. But there, there are fire hydrants uh, around the village that need addressed as well as does the uh, isolation valves uh, that didn't get replaced, like I said, during the last project. Go ahead, Evan, next, uh, next uh, slide, please. Um, the other part is we did receive $226,000 in capital outlay in last year's legislative session. Um, I'm not sure if that's coming available to us in 2024 or here soon. The sooner the better. Um, but that was uh, for equipment and uh, a sewer line coming from the school to the sewer plant that needs to be replaced. Um, now there are other issues uh, around the whole community that, that need to be addressed as well. And uh, that is the manholes in the last 20 years have been covered. And uh, that's part of the maintenance system program that we need to be able to go out there and raise those up so we can service those areas. But again, that will cost. And if we do that, they'll take away from the running uh, funds that we have. And if we ever get uh, a loan slash grant again from the Mexico Environmental Department, that would take away from that, that capital and we wouldn't be able to, we might come out of compliance again because, because it takes money to do these things. And, so this would be a great help for us. Uh, there's also um, the list stations. Uh, there, there's a list station that has a the inlet coming in 
has a sagging pipe and so kind of turns the sewer kind of septic before it gets to the sewer plant and that just helped make the whole thing run better if we get that fixed so there's a few things that we can do to enhance our system um including uh raising the manholes and and uh, raising those uh sagging pipes uh, going to the lift station and um uh, I, I guess that's it you guys have any questions Thanks, Paul. Uh, any questions for Blue Water? I, I have a question. Uh, number one, Paul, is uh, you are aware that uh, last year uh, you got $100,000 for uh, uh, wastewater assistance improvement from Capital Outlay. You are aware of that, right? And it's sitting there. Yeah, we got 226000 I think, all together. Uh -huh. um, but I don't think it's been made available to us yet. Well, the one in capital outlay money is available to you, and that's the one I've got on my list, which is $100,000. So you might want to look into that. That's capital outlay money, not uh, any other type. Uh, the other question that I have for you, and I'm glad uh, superint I know the superintendent's there. Uh, with the uh, new school being built, are you getting any assistance from the state to uh, be able to accommodate this new school as far as your sewer system and your water system? Not that I'm aware of addressing the sewer system. We haven't uh, had any communications uh, upon that. We, we did discuss that in the last legislative session, but we haven't discussed it outside of that. Okay, because sometimes uh, I have found out uh, in from previous uh, experiences that with the new coming in of a new school of course, uh, you get more students, and then of course you get more uh, usage of uh, existing systems. So you need to work with the schools and see how you can get some assistance in improving that system so that you can provide uh, whatever the schools need for their for their facility. So I, I do recommend that you work with the schools and see how they're going to uh, how they're going to provide. Uh, for their school, for their new school. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Representative Alcone, would you have a, a contact for me? They're, or... they're, they're, they're all on here. So they're, they're watching with bated breath and they're up next. So uh, all right. I think Representative Alcone raises a good point and we'll just tie that into our next presentation unless anybody else has any questions. If not, we appreciate uh, Blue Water and, and Mr. Spencer for the presentation today. If you need help accessing any of that funding, like Representative Garcia said, uh, feel free to call these legislators or contact the COG. We're happy to find out where the grant agreements got stuck, or if the bonds didn't get sell, sold, or you know, if you don't if you don't follow the process, it usually doesn't just roll roll to you. So we're we're happy to open open some doors, kick them down if we have to. So I appreciate it. If, if, if it Go ahead, Representative uh, Garcia. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, Representative Alcon brought up that uh, issue and also Senator Munoz on, uh, you know, you guys need to reach out to us, uh, Paul, not just Paul, all of you, and, and ask us, you know, where what happened to Capital Valley? You know, if they vetoed it, you tell you what's not there, but uh, Representative Alcon brought up a good, good point you know there's a hundred thousand dollars sitting there that you weren't aware of you know uh paul you're more welcome to call me and and, and i'm pretty sure uh representative alcon feels the same way you know just call out and reach out to us and tell us hey this is what's going on and that issue with a school i've been working on that because they're downside your school and we're going to hopefully put it back up to uh what it should be that's what we're working on but these problems with the sewer around the school and hydrogens you really need to uh, reach out to uh, us or to the school board or, or to the superintendent and ask him, you know what, we need a little bit of help with this, you know. Don't just let it go away on you because uh, that school's going to get built and uh, and need to have the right plumbing and right water and that kind of stuff and not try to put anybody on the spot, but uh, if you don't ask, you're not going to get it. So just keep that in mind, okay? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Evan. Thanks, Representative. Uh, right on cue, <laughs> uh, Grant Cibola County Schools. I know we have Superintendent Max Perez and his 
his team. Go ahead, Max. Hello, Evan. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, legislators, uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk this afternoon. So uh, just like to uh, start by saying yes, a lot of these projects uh, hinge or help, <clears throat> help each other out in the community uh, to uh, just uh, get on that uh, last Blue Water Village water uh, improvement system, for example. I'd like to second that, you know, any, any help that they get with that water system improvement is definitely gonna help our new school project that's coming up at, at uh, Blue Water Elementary. Uh, I'd like to also publicly thank uh, Representative Eric Garcia for uh, pushing on uh, all of the, so a lot of the aspects of that school, uh, the size, we've had some uh, uh, discrepancies about the, uh, uh, the, the size of the building and so on and so forth, but we've gotten a, <clears throat> gotten a lot of help. We'll see where, where we end up with that. Also, as far as uh, tapping into uh, some of the other proposals that have been on already, uh, the city of Grants, the, uh, the water drainage project, that would be a big benefit to us as well because we're looking at building a new uh, Mesa Elementary uh, School there. That's coming up after the, the blue water is, uh, is, is almost complete. And then also the improvements on Sacalaris, we, we also are, are planning uh, to, uh, to build a new transportation compound complex in that area. The one that we currently have is in desperate need of uh, improvements. So that's that's kind of another story, another front. But I just want to uh, encourage uh, legislators that we need to push on on the uh, also the uh, uh, priority three and four with the city of Grants, priority three with the uh, Blue Water Village water improvement. And also with the uh, economic development, anything to do with fiber and bringing it in that's going to help our students in our community. That's been a huge issue with uh, with us getting all, everybody connected. We've, we've got uh, we've got we've got a lot of work going on, but there's a lot of ongoing expense with uh, just getting our, our students connected. So uh, I'd like to just move on and to kind of answer uh, Senator Munoz's question on on capital out of the 2018 bond, 10 million dollar bond. We spent uh, about 194,000 on uh, security. Cameras, swipes, fencing, uh, those kind of things. Uh, Laguna Acma High School uh, basketball, uh, baseball, softball fields, three hundred eighty thousand. We have uh, the uh, the capital project in process now with the Blue Water Elementary School at two point five million. Uh, capital projects in planning. The one I just mentioned, Mesa View Elementary, uh, coming up uh, next is six point two million. Uh, transportation yard, four hundred thousand. So the total capital is about 9.7 out of that, uh, that capital money, leaves about 300,000, which we need for upgrades in our sidewalks and pavement improvements of that sort. So uh, that's, that's kind of where we're at with those, with, with the uh, expenditures uh, in capital. The two requests we have now is, is the uh, number one there. Uh, Evan, if you can put up the next slide. Uh, high school security access points. Uh, we've been looking at this for a while. We know we don't have students now, but we know we're gonna have the real world back someday soon. And we wanna be proactive and, and being sure that we're ready for these students. Uh, this, is, this is more than uh, looking at your traditional guard shack or shed put up in front of the school. We wanna, we wanna, uh, uh, we wanna structure that's uh, that has the proper lighting, security lighting, communications and technology, a restroom in there so the guards don't have to leave and, and come back to the uh, uh, to that uh, place of work. And also possibly the bumper guards for people entering and exiting uh, the two high schools. So uh, we, we have some, a lot of ideas and quotes and, and things of that sort. We would use this one at uh, Grants High School and one at Laguna Acoma Mid High School. The next up is uh, activity buses. And I know I've talked to uh, some of the legislators uh, the past few months or uh, even last year about uh, our, our current activity buses are, are worn, uh, no air conditioning. Uh, I'm not sure about the heating, uh, but uh, they're, they're, we are in need of uh, upgrade with uh, 
two activity buses to be used by both high schools. Uh, we wouldn't mark one for one school, one for the other. It would be, uh, they'd be used for both of the high schools. The, the quotes that we've been given are, <clears throat> would get us in the range of about 500,000 for both. And uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we have. Thank you. Uh, appreciate the, the, the updates and the presentation on the community support. Any, any questions for the school district? Evan? Yes, sir, Representative. Uh, I've been working uh, with the uh, superintendent of the Blue Water School because at one point, and this is for all the representatives and the senators to be aware of, they had downsized them from, uh, that, don't quote me on exact numbers, but like from 24,000 square foot to 17,000 square foot. The school room were gonna be like 400 square foot inside and that's awful small. And uh, we're trying to get them to come up to what it should be, which was uh, 23, 24,000 square foot. Cause uh, what I heard today that uh, they got about 20 more students back that are wanting to go back into school when it does come back out. So we cannot have a school downsized and then get our students to come back in. And this happened in Cubero when they built the Cubero school. They downsized it. And as soon as they opened it, it got flooded with uh, people from around the area there. They wanted to go to a new school. So now the school is too small. So we have to go back in and start working out again. And we don't want this to happen to Blue Water. And uh, we've been working on that. Uh, and one, uh, one more thing, uh, Mr. Perez, uh, on our kids not going to school uh, on virtual, it, it's a disaster, you know. I had a little girl this morning, an 11-year-old 11, 11 little girl tell me, I don't even want to go to school anymore. I'm not learning nothing. And that's happening to a lot of students, Mr. Perez. And, uh, and I would appreciate it. I know it's not out of your hands, but we need to work hard to see what we get our see what we need to do to get our kids back in the classroom. Because, you know, we're failing. Our kids are failing. Uh, we got too many kids out there with no internet. Uh, they're just not, it's not happening. So just a thought on that, okay? And on the school buses, uh, Mr. Perez, uh, you know that they told us that if we fund them, they're gonna take 20, 26% of your fund when the formula comes out to fund the school, uh, the school formula, the budgeting that they'll take 26% off of these school buses. So if we funded 500,000, at the end of the day, you're gonna lose 130,000 off of your money of, uh, on your funding formula. So just keep those things in mind because that's 130 grand, that's almost one school bus. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Thank you. Any other questions? Man, it's like on this virtual no, it's it goes a lot quicker than in person. Well, I appreciate the school district and the presentation uh, and all the hard work. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, uh, the Branch College. Uh, we've got New Mexico State University grants. We've got Dr. Chavez here and her team uh, to provide a presentation this morning. Thank you, Evan, and thank you, Senators Munoz and Sanchez and Representatives Garcia and Alcon. I appreciate the opportunity to present to you. I'm Marlene Chavez Toy Bannon, Associate Campus Director for New Mexico State University Grants. Um, this, Dr. Ben Winkle, we are juggling um, presentations to different senators within the state, so he may be jumping back in, but he's addressing some senators in Alamogordo right now. Next slide, please. Um, I have a different approach today, but I just wanted to remind you of our campus here in Grants and that we're so lucky to have a community college in our, in our local Cibola County community. And what we do at NMSU Grants, we have general education and transfer. We provide healthcare um, programs, certified nurse, CPR, our newest phlebotomy, and we even have a Bachelor of Science of Nursing here. Education, we provide the school districts with, with educational assistance teachers, and we offer the school district students dual credit pathways toward a degree while they're still in high school. 
We also provide workforce training in several different areas, as you can see there. In addition to credentialed um, areas, we offer workforce training in fiber optics, SCADA, and we have the Small Business Development Center. We also provide um, education for our correctional inmates at the, at the corrections department to reduce recidivism within the, within, um, the prison system. Next slide, please. Some initiatives we have here at the campus. One that I'm very excited about is the Indoor Agricultural Project in collaboration and partnership with Tri-State. They have um, afforded a, some grant to our campus and New Mexico State University to, ha to have a pilot project with, um, it's a, a boxcar that provides um, some agricultural projects. We're gonna be growing kale here right on our campus and um, learning how to harvest that, sell it, all kinds of good stuff. Um, with the good fortune from, from Senator Garcia, we have just opened our Student Veterans Resource Center and hired a, a person to run that center. We have an early college high school on our campus. We have um, exemplary tutors and academic coaches. We have collaborations with the school district with math pathways. And we um, every day we look to expand our healthcare and education programs as well as our corrections programs. Next slide, please. One of our um, efforts within the system of NMSU is economic development, not only statewide, but local. So we look at different ways at our campus to, to develop students opportunities to develop um, economic strategies. Um, we want to look at entrepreneurship with the indoor agricultural project. We look at innovation systems and ecosystems. We are also interested in rural economic development with our county extension. Um, we are interested in workforce development with our small business development center. And overall, we, are, we want to be a part of the community to help grants and improve economic development. Next slide, please. What I would like to, to ask today um, as a legislative priority for higher education are three things. One, I would like for, for the four of you to consider restoring the federal swap for the, the CARES Act. Last year when the Higher Education received CARES Act money, the state of New Mexico did a federal swap and reduced the budgets by the amount of that money. Full restoration of this federal swap would, would really help our ING budget and certainly here locally at our campus. Second, I'd like to advocate for um, higher education funding formula that it stays as it, as it is right now with 0% redistribution for performance funding. And we can maintain the current levels of ING funding. And lastly, um, looking at the dual credit funding and supporting a funding model that could um, adequately compensate institutions for providing these services. Community colleges um, throughout the state have this, just this year alone has served, served 8,000 students statewide. In our local community, we have served up to 500 dual credit students um, in Cibola County. However, the funding is not um, adequate and, and it's actually becoming a hardship on our campus. So if, um, looking at the dual credit funding and maybe hoping to revamp that would be a priority for, for our campus. As far as current capital projects, we have two capital projects um, currently on our campus. They will be completed within 90 days. We have our Fidel Center that is um, under renovation and it's nearing completion. We also have Martinez Hall with the renovations of our bathrooms, all six bathrooms, and that will be finished within 90 days. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Chavez, uh, any questions from our legislators? Um, I just wanted to bring up one thing while we had you. Um, I know Eileen and uh, Sabola Communities Economic Development Foundation have been doing a lot of work in economic development. They actually meet, uh, we actually meet as a region based on the closure of the tri-state plant and effects to the Pruitt Industrial Cluster just about every two weeks with uh, folks from the main branch 
who are providing support. So it'd be nice to have you and, and Dr. Winkle uh, connect with us and with that group um, so we can know what you're doing locally uh, to build on what we're doing regionally. Yes, yeah, certainly. We, we would love to be a part of that group in conversation. Perfect. Um, any other questions, uh, Sender? I great presentation. I just liked what all you guys do there for that small community. It's really good. I like the welding and how you guys are going to grow the kale and sell it. And that's great what you're doing in agriculture. That's my background. So I'm really proud to see that. Thank you. We're looking forward to it. So um, the box should be here in April. And so we should start production shortly after that. Well, let me, uh, if I could, I'd love to see how it goes. Oh, I'm yes, I, I will invite you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Representative, I see you popped up on TV. Do you have a question? Uh, thank you, Evan. It's not a question. Uh, you're talking about economic development, and Mrs. Yarbrough is in economic development of the county, and it would be nice if we work together on what's happening. Uh, another thing, uh, representatives and senators, uh, you've always helped to uh, support uh, solo works. And that, that's a big issue in grants, you know, because they are working really hard. They've had a hard time getting to where they're at, but they're progressing. And, you know, if we can help uh, continue that effort, because we don't want it to go away, it, it, you know, because they've, uh, like I said, I funded them before, and our other representatives and senators have done the, the same thing, and that's very well appreciated. But we really need to uh, step up and make it, bigger goal, that's a statewide thing. And you know, if you look at their numbers today to what they were two years ago, three years ago, I mean, they've really improved. And you know, it's just a struggle. It's always been a struggle. We work with the state and, you know, I've been in meetings uh, with uh, Secretary Keys, and they'll say, well, we need all this paperwork. So they submit it. Next time we meet, they say, well, we need this paperwork. It's all the same song and dance, but we're improving. We're getting, you know, they're moving along. We're, we're getting them ahead of this game. So I uh, appreciate the support of everybody that's involved in this to keep it going because it is economic development along with uh, what uh, uh, Ms. Torvanis has been saying. You know, she's into that. And if they work together, maybe we could uh, make a bigger thing out of this. Two entities, but it'd be a good thing to work together and, and move along with that project. Yes, and um, Representative Garcia, it's um, Solo Works is definitely on Dr. Van Winkle's um, radar. He has um, signed MOUs with NMSU Almagordo and NMSU Carlsbad with <laughs> Solo Works to for the intent of com continued con uh, communication, and it is a statewide initiative and and. Um, we're looking forward to hopefully expanding and, and being a part of SolarWorks. Well, you know, I appreciate that because, you know, at the end of the day, when we present again in front of the, the Secretary Keys, uh, Eileen and, and her staff say, well, this, these people are on board and we need to do this and we need to do that. Because I know uh, I gave them $150,000 last time around and they, uh, the first time around it went somewhere else. The second time around, they took some of it away. So it's just been an issue. But, uh, you know, they're really uh, working hard to get ahead of this. So I would really appreciate that. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Representative. Any other questions, Representative Alcon? You're on mute still. You're still, you're still on mute. Okay. Yeah, I go. just want to know who eats kale. Why yeah, we planting beans. <laughs> yeah, we want green chili. Well, unfortunately, they didn't ask me what I thought we would like here. So um, we'll have to have some some recipe building or something with with the kale. But yeah. Okay, I'm just curious. One uh, one thing that I've always brought up with our Brent uh, presidents, and uh, of course. I know that they don't, you don't have the title, but I know that you're doing the job anyway. Uh, my question has always been that we have a lot of people that go to our branches, high school graduates go into our branches and we get them as far as associate degrees. Right now in the community in Cibola County, I don't know how many people we have with associates. 
-hmm. And they have one associate, two associates, and sometimes three. But even five associates do not make one bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. And the difference in money between a associate's degree and a bachelor's degree is about 10 grand a year. What are you doing to bring these associates up to bachelor's degrees? Well, that's they a can't, look, what happens is they graduate high school, okay, and they're young. By the time they get their associates, they're married, they got a family, they got husbands or wives that work here, and now they can't go to the main branch in Las Cruces. So what are you doing now for them? Well, currently what we're doing is we are providing access via distance education. New Mexico State University has a new program called NMSUO, which is NMSU Online, which offers a variety of bachelor's and master's degrees online where students could get those and stay in their community. So one, we're trying to help bridge the students who earn associates and provide them opportunities and access and educate them on opportunities beyond the two-year programs. Secondly, is offer also working with students to figure out how to finance, how to, how to pay for this, because it's also very expensive. Working with um, the uh, Department of Workforce Solutions, identifying programs that would be funded and where they can get um, funding to continue their education. So scholarships and financial aid is also very important. NMSU is, is expanding their offerings in for their distance ed. And so we are actually using that as a marketing tool for us to say, you know, come here, get your associates, and then you can go to Las Cruces and earn your bachelor's degree. If there's one thing that COVID has done for all of us is it showed us, has it has shown us what is actually possible doing things remotely and distant and, and distance education, it, it can be done. And so that, that's what we're doing here locally. Thank you. I just want you to keep that in mind because like I say, I mean, I, I believe that if the branch were to reach out to every one of their associates that is sitting out there, you could probably bring them back in and you could probably bring your enrollment up by uh, offering them uh, a way to get to that bachelor's or even that master's degree. So I'll just leave it at that. Thank you, Marlene. Thank you. Evan. Uh, this is for Marlene. Yes. What What are you doing uh, for to help veterans get into school? Well, Mr. Garcia, the first thing we did was hire a veterans resource coordinator. Okay, and so we're gonna we she just started about three weeks ago, and so the stu the vice president for student success student um, services and myself. We are working with her to identify how to recruit veterans. And more importantly, the ones that we have already who are here, how to keep them here. Um, working closely with them to um, make sure they have the resources and support they need to be successful. Um, again, it's in the infancy stage because she is new. She is, has, is very energetic and has lots of ideas. So I can't really be as prescriptive as you probably would like to, like me to be today, but give me another 30 to 60 days and I'll be happy to sit down with you and let you know exactly what we're doing to recruit, re recruit veterans to our yeah, campus. Let's do 30 days, okay? Okay, <laughs> I'll give you a call. No, and uh, uh, Mr. Vannon, another deal that uh, I've been working with uh, the veteran service officer to get a, uh, a service officer here in Grant. And I think they hired one maybe yesterday or last week. And I, I don't know who it is, but if you could reach out to him, uh, he's gonna be located there in the Old County building on 500 uh, High Street. Okay. They're, 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 we will have a service officer here in Grant all, at all times. And if I'm not mistaken, it might be Gunnery Sergeant Garcia. Oh, nice. Awesome. So you, you might wanna connect up with him and that we can get more help for our veterans because a lot of veterans are, are struggling. And you know, as you well know, I'm a United States Marine Corps Vietnam veteran. And uh, Mr. Edicio Alcon is a, an Army Corpsman from Vietnam. Okay. So it's near dear to our heart on helping veterans as much as we possibly can too. You know, everybody needs help, but we need to kind of reach out to them, okay? Well, thank you for that information. We'll definitely reach out. 
Thank you. Uh, anything else, New Mexico State grants? I saw Dr. Van Winkle join us. I, I apologize. I just, just got off of the uh, Zoom meeting with the legislators in the Alamogordo area. And, uh, and I they thought should I would- be, I, they, should I, be I, the they should be the second priority. <laughs> You're right. I apologize. Um, uh, but it sounds like Marlene did an excellent job of explaining Grant's situation. And uh, uh, just, I'd just like everyone to know that uh, the, uh, you know, the system, the power of the system in the, in the state, the, covering the entire state with all the extension services in our, in our branch campuses, we feel like this is an opportunity to help economic development for the entire state. And we know grants is such an important part of that. And we appreciate the work that Marlene and that campus are doing. So um, I'll leave it at that and, and uh, be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, we appreciate it. We appreciate all the presentations. I, I'm impressed too by the number of people who are still on the line just listening to the other presentations. It shows great community support across the, the number of organizations. Um, I, I did wanna just go to the floor just in case I missed anybody um, or if anybody has something they thought of that they forgot to mention. Um, real quick, is there anybody on the line um, that has something for this uh, legislative delegation? And if not, we'll we'll go with uh, we'll go with uh, giving our legislators the last word. Um, uh, why don't we start with our newest member, uh, Senator Sanchez? Why don't you uh, give us a couple closing remarks or or words of wisdom? Well, all of it was a great presentation. And I know we all, I got to work with the other representatives and the other senators there so we can get all these taken care of. I'm glad that I like the way they, everybody laid their stuff out and uh, we'll work together and hopefully we can get, you know, most of all these projects funded. I mean, these people, I know they put them on their priority list because they're priorities. So we need to work together and get them done. And again, thank you for inviting me to this. And, uh, Great to finally see uh, Representative uh, Harry and uh, Representative Alcone, and I can't wait to meet you guys and uh, Senator Munoz. I can't wait to work with you guys. Thank you again, and thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Representative Alcone. Uh, you, you woke me up, Evan. I got your name right. Ah, thank you. Thank you for the presentations. I mean, uh, this is pretty enlightening. It's not as horrible as it's been in previous years. Usually I have uh, like $71 million worth of requests before the end of the session. This is not as bad. Uh, I don't, we're going to work together. Uh, I do want to welcome Senator Sanchez. Uh, I know that we will work together. Somehow or another, we'll make you work with us, okay? And uh, I uh, don't know, I don't have much else to say. I just hope everybody has a, a great uh, Christmas and a happy new year. And I know we're gonna go into 2021 and we're gonna be a lot stronger than we were this year. I just know again, remember if we are in Santa Fe, my office is your office. Don't forget that no matter what, if we're not in Santa Fe, I'm probably gonna be at my house. So. Call me at my home. Um, I think if you look in the phone book, if anybody still has a phone book, I'm listed in the phone book, okay? I know everybody has a cell phone, but if you do have a, a phone book and you want to find the Liceo Alcon, you can find me in the phone book. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Representative. Yes. Representative Garcia, you're, you're, our, you're our closer. Uh, thank you, Eva. Thanks for putting this on. Thanks, everybody, for being on this Zoom, it's, I know it's a full, it's hard to do, but anyway, to everybody out there, you know, I'm looking at my capital outlay sheet here, and this is from 2018, and I had $7.7 .7 million out there in 2018, and I still have 7.2 million that has been spent. You guys need to spend this money, because if not, it'll go away. I'm telling you, it will go away. Because remember the first year I was in, in, as a legislator, we swept it all away. And people are saying, well, you guys shouldn't have done that. But, you know, we don't want it to happen again. And I don't want to kick a can down the road, but it's a possibility there. Senator Munoz, gracias. Uh, Senator Sanchez, I look forward to seeing you so we can work together. Uh, Lee, 
I, me and you talk all the time, so we'll make Senator Sanchez work with us, okay? Evan, thank you again. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. We'll add, we'll add 10 more presentations for next year because we got it in under two hours. So I appreciate everybody uh, really concentrating and focusing on, on the priorities, um, and getting those out in front of our legislators. Appreciate the legislators and their time. Uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, again, uh, reach out to these guys, uh, cell phone, emails. Um, the worst thing that could happen is they, they don't know what, what you need or don't know how they can help. I know all these guys are going to do whatever they can to help their communities and constituents. Uh, again, everybody be safe. Uh, even even to, what ahead, said, to what you just said, thank you for saying that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't know your needs. We know some of the needs, but if you don't tell us what you need, it's very hard to look at to address the issue. So please reach out. Uh, Merry Christmas to all. Happy holidays, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Representative. Um, with that, we'll be, we'll be adjourned uh, again. We're not sure exactly how the session is going to work, uh, but we should know the, the early, early January, I believe, uh, Legislative Council Service will make the final determination for the session. Uh, again, the parameters of being virtual and how committees will work. Um, but I think this was a good, a good way to put the information in front of everybody. Uh, again, we kind of lost Senator Munoz halfway along the way, but uh, we'll get him caught up. He's always, he's always running and gunning. So I, I guess his truck kicked him off today, but uh, he'll be able to watch this presentation. And uh, he, he's one that will definitely circle back and ask questions individually as needed. So Eileen, did you have something? Okay. <laughs> he just popped on my screen. I, I love your background. It's very, uh, it's very, very festive for this time of year. Again, everybody be safe. You and your family enjoy. Uh, and uh, we'll stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Evan. We'll see you. Thanks, Senator. Thanks, Representatives. Thank you, everyone.